Hey guys, welcome back to or welcome to my channel. If you haven't been here before, my name is Tyan Olchen. And if you have, thank you so much for watching my videos and supporting me. It really does mean a lot to me. And yes, I did take a two week long break. Wasn't planning to, but it was needed. It was for my mental health and it was great. I just focus on work and my family and I am in a much better place now. Um, I always want to preach talk to someone if you need to take a break look after yourself mental health is very serious and needs to be taken seriously and while i was gone we hit 77 subscribers to all 77 of you thank you so much for subscribing you're making my dreams come true it is so surreal to me and i can't believe people are enjoying my content and subscribing i thought maybe i'd scare people away with my true crime fascination <laughs> and yeah and on a more serious note, this will be another episode in my True Crimes of Australia series. Another one on Ivan Malat. We're nearly done with this case. And in this episode, this video, we will be focusing on suspected victims of Ivan Malat. And yeah, this will get really dark and I will be naming people and yeah. I hope you guys like this and um, let's get into it. And just a quick disclaimer like I had put in all my other videos, I will be talking about sexual assault, rape, um, harassment, robbery, violence, gun, and all that nitty gritty stuff. Because of that, I just want to put it there. If you don't like that stuff, click off this video now. It's definitely not for you. And yeah, I always want to put that disclaimer there, but because this case was so important to Australian history, I will not be age restricting this. It could be used for the high school and college students. And my links, my sources will be linked down below as well. And I just want to put that disclaimer out there now. So the last two episodes, we focused on the seven known victims of Ivan Malat. However, it is widely believed and speculated by most of Australia, including myself, that there were way more victims to fall to Ivan Malat. So in Australia, it is pretty widely speculated and common belief that Ivan Malat was re responsible for the disappearances of three Newcastle girls from 1978 to 1979. And the ages and names of these girls were Leanne Goodall, 20, who went missing in 1978, Amanda Robinson, who was 14 and went missing in 1979, and Robin Hickey, who was 14 and also went missing in 1979. For those of you who don't know where Newcastle is, it is a um, city, a harbour city in New South Wales. It is widely known for its wineries, it's got some of the best in the country and it is known for its coal industry and it is actually one of the largest coal exporting harbours in the world. Um, it's got a lot of highlands south and north of it and it is also 117 kilometres away from Sydney. Newcastle is in an area that is known as the Hunter region and is also called Hunter Valley and it is the home to the Hunter River. Now that you know a little bit more about Newcastle, let's go back to the three girls who sadly went missing from Newcastle. The reason why a lot of people, myself included, believe that Ivan Malak most likely was responsible for their disappearances was because he was doing roadworks in the area at the time of their disappearance. The case of these three girls is a very big case, very well known one, and it's also known as the Hunter Missing Three, Missing Hunters Three. And I will be doing a video about that, like covering the whole case by itself as best as I can. But I wanted to mention it in this video because of the possible connection to Ivan Malar. Even at the inquest into the girls disappearances um, and when Ivan Malat was 
the main, only a main suspect for the disappearance at the time. He was very all believing. He believed that he was innocent and was determined to make everyone else believe it. And he also stated that he would never commit these heinous crimes and maintain this innocence. He was also quoted as saying in reference about Amanda Robinson who was 14, I could ask how they could let a 14 year old run around alone at midnight. A another possible and suspected victim of Ivan Muller is Peter Letcher. Clyde Small posited that there was enough solid evidence to lead to there being an eighth victim in the backpack of murders. However, they were never able to figure out exactly who that eighth victim might have been. Clyde Small was also the lead detective on this case and was responsible for leading officers to Ivan Miller and for arresting him. Clyde Small was a former New South Wales Assistant Police Commissioner. Peter Letcher's body was found in the General Lawn, I think that's how you say it, cave in 1988 and it is where he found is west of Sydney. And the reason why they saw that Ivan Malat was responsible for his murder is because when they found him he had four to five shots. He'd been shot in the head four to five times and was stabbed in the back. And his body was left in a very bushy area, much like the other backpacker victim. And it also came to light a few years later after they found him that three of the bullets that were found were shot from the same Ruger 22 caliber rifle that was used on Clark and Nuke Bauer. However, sadly, there was never quite enough evidence to charge him with Peter Letcher's death. Karen Roiland is another suspected victim of the notorious serial killer. Her last known appearance was in February of 1971 and her and her sister were headed to Canberra in separate vehicles. However, her sister made it and she sadly did not. Her car was later on found that night on the rugged outskirts of town and the next day, it is said that Ivan Malat actually went to work and was bragging to his workmates about killing a man and burying his body out in the wood, in the bush. Karen's body was found three months later near Canberra and her body was actually found 15 metres up a track in the Fairborn Pine Plantation, which is real close to home for me because I live in Canberra and I've driven past there so many times. And another thing to note about Ivan Malab that I might not have mentioned in previous videos is that always at any scene of a crime, any murder, there would often be bits of rubbish and trash left behind, like beer bottles, um, cigarette butts, obviously from, not from him because he wasn't a smoker that we know of, maybe from the other killer. And sadly, Karen was no different. Um, when they found her, her body was found laying on her back, her arms above her head and her clothing was pulled down and there was a beer bottle not too far away from her head. In June of 1972, um, 19 year old Robin Hoenville Bartram and 18 year old Anita Cunningham both went missing. And they were both nursing students, really good friends. They shared a flat together and they went missing while hitchhiking from Melbourne to Queensland. Robin was found 80 kilometres west of Charter Towers and Charter Towers is actually inland from Townsville and she was found under a bridge. When they found her body, they found out and that she had been shot in the head with a 22 calibre rifle and sadly she was found naked from the waist down and Anita was never found. Police did examine Ivan Malat's movement at the time but they were never actually able to connect him to this case. In October of 1972 best friend's 18 year old um, Gabrielle Janky I think is how you say her last name and 16 year old Michelle Riley 
um, decided to hitchhike from Brisbane to the Gold Coast to check out and enjoy the nightlife there. Um, however, they were not seen for a while and a week later after their disappearance, they actually found Gabrielle's body at the bottom of a steep embankment on the Pacific Highway between Brisbane and the Gold Coast. Michelle was found 10 days later in way further inland and in bushland and when they found her body they of course suspected sexual assault as she was not wearing underwear and her dress had been pushed up and there was also a lot of branches covering her body when they found her. In June of 1980 Gillian Jameson and Deborah Balking who were two 20 year olds who were really close friends, known hitchhikers and trainee nurses went missing. And they were last seen at a pub in Parramatta, Sydney, talking to a man in a large brimmed black cowboy hat. Deborah later on called their other flatmate and informed them that night that they would not be coming home and that they were actually catching a ride to a party in Wollongong. Wollongong is on the south coast and after their disappearance um, authorities did name Ivan Malat as a person of interest during the inquest into the girl's disappearance however nothing more came of it they were never found and no one was ever charged with anything the reason why Ivan Malat was named as a person of interest is because at the time he had been working in western Sydney for about a year 17-year-old Elaine Johnson and 18-year-old Carrie Ann Joel um, were last seen in Cronulla, New South Wales in either late 1979 or early, or early 1980 and it is believed that they had hitchhiked to Wyong and which is on the central coast and while they were there ran into foul play. In this case, at the time of their disappearance Ivan Malat was the main suspect as he had been working in an area where they were believed to have been headed to. In September of 1991, Diane Panaccio, I think that's how you say her last name, I'm not quite sure I stuck with name, um, was in Bangador, which again really close to home to me, that's where my family came, a part of my family came from, my uncle lived there until we moved down the coast a couple of years ago, so I spent a lot of time out there. Extremely close to home to me. But she was enjoying a night out with a friend when she told her friend that she would hitchhike the 20 minute drive back to her place in Queanbeyan, which is extremely close to Canberra, it's like right outside of Canberra. And she was last seen walking towards the King's Highway and her body was sadly found two months later laying face down and covered in pine branches in the Talaganda Talaganda State Forest and sadly when they found her they found that she had been stabbed in the vertebrae and that she was most likely sexually assaulted as her underwear was around her ankle. Anyway that is all for today's episode in my True Crimes of Australia series that is, and the little mini series focused on Ivan Malat and that is a big list of his suspected victims. There's way more, but this is the main one that I could find a lot of information on. And yeah, it's very dark and heavy. And the fact that so many people lost their lives and they still don't know who the killer was or never got justice is heartbreaking. And yeah, I hope you guys like this video um if you did hit that like and subscribe bu button comment down below if there are any australian true crime cases or missing person cases that you would like for me to cover and yeah don't forget get my lot inside australia's biggest manhunt by clyde small which i did who i did mention in this video lead detective on this case and was responsible for arresting ivan Malat. it is also co-authored by tom gilling and don't forget to get Sins of the Brother, which is the inspiration for Catching Malat, that was written by Mark Whittaker and Les Kennedy. Anyways, I love you guys and I'll see you in the next one.
拜。